Hello friends, welcome back to our Pro Cycling Manager 2023 Latin America Challenge. If you did not see the last episode, highly recommend you go back and watch that first. Some of the stuff we're going to talk about here is going to be spoilers. Uh, don't want to ruin that, so just a quick heads up before we, uh, we get into it. Um, we made quite a few good signings during the transfer window, and we are currently in line to get promoted. Our ranking is not going to hold, as you can see on the bottom of the screen here. We are currently ranked 25th, which would get us uh, up a division from the third tier to the second tier, Continental Pro. That's not going to hold, as Continental Pro teams uh, re-sign some of their riders, sign new riders. Uh, our score is going to drop. How much it's going to drop? I don't know. Uh, I think we are going to be right on the edge of whether or not we get promoted. The thing that could guarantee promotion for us is if one of our riders gets better than they currently are. Uh, so Camillo Ardia is scheduled to be the third best rider on the team next year behind two new signings. Uh, however, he has the ability to improve. He has a half star of overall left and his all his you know potential components look really good. So he has a lot of different ways, different opportunities to level up. If he were to level up between now and the end of October, that would virtually guarantee us progression up uh, to the, the next level, to second tier Continental Pro. So this episode's going to be focused on getting him as many results as possible. We've got the Gran Premio Guatemala, which looks like it suits him very well. It's also a dot two, so he should be one of the best riders in that race. Um, these Turkish races are all flat. We've got a couple of winnable stages in the Tour of Germany. We've got one in the Tour of Romania. Uh, we've got a couple here in uh, the Tour of Slovenia. We have uh, a classic in Japan that looks good for him, and then three stages of the Tour of Turkey. So we're going to sim all the stuff that isn't winnable for Ardia for the rest of the season, and anything that is winnable, we're going to play out and try to get him a result. But First up, we have the UCI World Championships uh, Men's Elite Road Race. We are in control of Colombia. We have not selected any of our riders. We've selected the best Colombian riders that we can uh, that we can find, and basically we're going to try to win to get a level up in the popularity of cycling and the training structure for Colombia, so that we can get better Colombian new gens in the future. Our leader for this race is going to be Sergio Higuita. Uh, we have no no one with a good sprint here, but 69 sprint, 75 acceleration is not bad at all for a climber. Uh, given that it's going to be a very reduced bunch at the end with no real sprinters, he should have a chance to win if we get him over the last climb and into the main selection with a little bit of energy left. It's going to be a decent little flat run at the end here. Uh, we have to go over this pretty short but steep, uh, difficult climb nine times. And then we've got a descent to recover, and it looks like about a 4k flat run into the end. So should suit our team pretty well. Let's get into it. As we get into the race, Sergio Higuita does get a positive race day condition, but he's only 75 stamina, so it takes him up to 78, which is fine. But this is a pretty brutal course. Hopefully he does end up being our best option. Uh, even though Rigo Uran has a plus 3, his base stamina is 72. Uh, he's older rider. This is his final season, so his stamina has been declining. Uh, Danny Martinez also gets a 78 with his plus. Miguel Angel Lopez actually only a uh, 76. And then Egon Bernal is going to be our highest stamina rider. Does not have a good sprint there, though. Uh, 64. So Bernal's our backup plan. We may have to switch to him if things aren't going well for Hagita, but uh, Hagita getting a positive has me uh, feeling optimistic that we can at least get him in the final selection and get a good result. So let's get our uh, leaders protected. Good deep team, even the, um, you know, the domestiques, the protectors are pretty strong. They should be able to last for uh, a pretty long time. And if we can get into like the second to last climb with uh, you know, a few of our domestiques still intact, we're going to have a pretty good time, I think. 
Uh, not going to send anyone in the breakaway in a race like this. 250 kilometers with nine climbs. Uh, the the breakaway is definitely just going to blow up, and I'm even if it gets big, I'm not particularly concerned about it. Looks like we're going to end up with a two rider breakaway that will uh, absolutely blow up. I think it'll be quiet for the first, uh, you know, 100 150 kilometers or so. We will come back when the race starts to get spiced up. You rejoin us with 61 kilometers to go, and things are finally starting to kick off. No attacks on that last ascent of the climb, but Seth Kuss went to the front and started pushing a pace, and then on the downhill, three, these three riders, uh, Utsenko, Schultz, and Eiking, went on the attack, so it seems like we are going to start actually getting some racing. Not too concerned about these guys, but... Uh, let's see what we got here. He or she, Groschartner, Valgren, still not that concerned, although he or she is a good rider. Uh, we're gonna, at least on the next, the next climb, we're gonna start seeing some, some attacks. So I'm gonna start with, uh, the boys on maintain 85, but if we see a star start to go, we're gonna have to train up and start chasing. like the the tempo in general is picked up rather than just like somebody attacking feeling okay although our domestiques are out of red gotten through the the steepest part though gonna hold for the moment got paulus going roglich going where is pagacher still here i'm chilling not that we want Roglic getting too far, but I'm not going to get worried about it until Pagacher goes. Simmons continues going. Tratnik goes. Van Eric goes. Okay, now Pagacher's going. Now I have to go. That's my signal to not let people get away. So, time to make a big ol' train. Uh, oh, Lopez has worse stamina, and then, let's see, Bernal has the second most. And we will make a big train and start chasing these guys. Thankfully, enough people tried to attack that it was, you know, kind of long. Um, it looks like, let's see, we got Pagacher, Tratnik, Paulus, Vanier in a group, but... Plenty of time left to chase them down, and uh, plenty of juice left in our guys, although we will have to hopefully get some recovery for our stars in this uh, this downhill. And we're getting some splits, I think this should probably come back together in the downhill, but um, we're going to want to be the, the ones attacking next time up. Is this Remco? Oh, that is Lawrence de Ploops. Rodriguez, Henley, not really sure why these guys are attacking on the flat. They are climbers. They're not going to get very far. But we've uh, we've put ourselves in a good situation here. 35k to go. Haven't had any of our domestiques go out yet. Everyone's got some gas left in the tank. Our stars have recovered quite a bit on this downhill. And we should be in contention the race in general hasn't been that hard as you can see like everyone's still here the tempo only started to pick up a little bit on the third to last climb Tahada, not amazing flat rating here but i don't want to just switch to another guy to switch to another guy until he's burned i will i will you know pick up the pace here though i want to be in good position for the, the last climb point we can burn guys just to burn guys if I really want to because we have plenty of riders left uh, oh going 95 in this little hill does dip into the red of our stars got to recover that real quick was not paying attention to that issue don't think that we have uh, 
Maybe just dip it into the right a little bit in these little bumps. We're fine. Water's not not great, but if we get some separation, we don't have to do the like go to the back of the Peloton thing. Have Quintana go 99 until he is out or until we get to the really steep stuff. And now we're in attack mode, everybody, but we need to gel up. Not sure who we're gonna if we're gonna be able to drop anybody, honestly, because by anybody I mean anybody of consequence. Just given that this race has been pretty easy so far. Really just want good positioning for the end rather than thinking I'm gonna drop anybody. We have some little separation here though. We've made a smaller group. Roglic, Dodu, Pagacher. Who you think? Hollis hanging on. Van Air. Wow, Van Air hanging on. That's pretty uh, cool for him. Not good for us. Because he will smoke the rest of this group in a sprint. I saw some separation. Are we just going to get away here? No. But we did... No, I thought we dropped Wu. He's still there. That sucks. Okay, we are very much in trouble for winning. Because Wu Van Air is uh, by far the best sprinter here. It's not even close. However, let's see what's Roglic. Roglic is better than us. Gadu is better than us. Pagacher, obviously. Palace about the same. And then, yeah, Woods the man. So, going to be a tough one here. Drop it down to 85 now that we're in the Flat? Or, uh, it's not quite flat yet, but we don't have quite the, the gas to go 99 the whole flat period. Hoping someone attacks us early instead of taking us to the sprint and just gasses themselves out. Um, we can go now and we can use the pizza's gel. Can't imagine we can wear anyone out given that decent downhill that we just went through, but we can try. Probably going a little too early here. If if Woot's got any gas, he'll win. Yeah, see he just he just flies by everybody. Can we get a podium though? Oh, he actually runs out of gas. Pagatra might win it. No, Woot Van Air hangs on, but we do get a podium. Um I don't know, maybe there was a way we could have won that, but I think we managed that pretty well. You know, you come down to a sprint against Woot Van Air and Tade Pagacher. What are you gonna do? Uh, we beat Roglic, Gadu, Paulus, so obviously would have liked to win, but satisfied with that. That was that was not a terrible performance. Second race of the episode, we're back with our own team and the Grand Premio Guatemala. Ardia unfortunately draws a negative one, so Aular and Lopez probably better candidates to win the race, but that does not matter to us. I don't care if Ardia gets a minus three and the next best rider gets a plus three, we are narrowly focused from now to the end of the season on getting the best results possible for Ardia. So if that means we throw away a win that we could have got for Aular or Lopez in order to scrape a top five with Ardia, that's okay because our one and only goal is improving uh, Ardia's attributes, getting him a level up by the, uh, by the end of October. 
The only way that's going to happen is if we accelerate that by getting him good results. So we're going to do the best we can to get him a good result today, even though he's on a minus one. As we head into the final ascent of this very steep climb, I'm going to train up and get aggressive. The first three times up, we just followed, you know, up the effort a little bit more each time. Um, last time around on 85 effort, we were hanging in the pack just fine, but some people were starting to attack. It was start starting to be pretty close to not being enough. So this last time up, I think the best defense is a good offense and we should simply attack up the climb. So we'll get the train going. Uh, I almost put Ardea in here because that would be the uh, sensible thing to do. However, that's not the game we're playing today. Ardea goes to the back. So we'll start on 85 and then see if anybody's, you know, creeping up on us trying to attack and then we'll... Well, nobody's nobody's creeping up we'll just you know feather it up maybe we need to uh go hard knock out some sprinters already had quite a few split off we've got less than half the field in this group right now and i assume we're gonna have guys falling off the back as we push a half decent pace up this thing right at the end we can go 99, see if we can like really split some people off. And yeah, that reduced that last little acceleration at the end, reduced the group quite a bit. These guys are even sitting up. Got some good riders here Archie Ryan, Menahuising, Stana Mitat. If those guys aren't working harder to try to get back to the front. Uh, Ardea having considerably less red than Aular, even though he's a better climber, just because of the race day condition situation. He definitely should have enough juice to just 85 train it to the end. Especially with this, this little downhill section here, we can the uh, the big boys can recover on that for sure. But uh, the yellow bars aren't looking amazing. I might have uh, might be overcooking it by doing this instead of sitting on. We'll see. It's not a big objective. It's not you know, and our is on a negative, so there's never a. Uh, a big chance but at this point I'm it's like even though I'm scared and I think I should probably back off we're gonna we're gonna commit <laughs> we're just gonna commit to what we were doing and hope that this little tiny downhill is enough recovery I think we're doing okay though we're not using up guys that quickly did not mean to do 86 I do not actually want to use any red Wearing out anybody behind? Probably not, given that Melvio has been able to hang on, on default. Hopefully we're preventing people from recovering, though, at least. How far to this? Okay, we got like a kilometer to this downhill. People are going to come up to us while we're going 59, but that's okay. Hopefully it even baits them into attacking. Um, well, don't want to bait Miguel Angel Lopez into attacking, because he might just stay away. That's not good. But we can chase him down. Copium. struggling <laughs> should have thought to gel up Osorio earlier but it's fine and yeah, 
2.4 to go, steep hill, we're, we're going to have people attacking, we're going to have to go 99. Also, we should have gelled these guys up earlier. Oh no, Osorio's kind of separating from these guys. Can we win this? We're doing okay here. Yellow sprint from Lopez. Valgren's looking kind of like in the best position. Can I be a jerk and block? I can. I will. You might think that's cheese. You'd be right. I don't care. It's in the game. I'm going to use it. I think. Oh wow, that's the line. I'm talking about not paying attention. Good lord. Um, we're gonna win, but it's not gonna be with Ardia. Harold Martin Lopez crosses the line in first place. Ardia does not even get a top five. I have managed that horribly, even though I've won the race. I've done so in just like the absolute most brain dead way possible. So uh, good for me. This is the first of two stages of the Tour of Germany that Ardia could theoretically be competitive in. However, the start list for this race is completely insane. UAE has not only brought Tade Pagacar, but the A team support team, Almeida Ayuso, Bora Hansgro. Not only has Jai Hanley here, but also Hagita with him. Uh, Baran Victorious brought a little bit more of a sprint team, so that's not really a thre threat. Jaco brought Simon Yates, and also uh, our good friend JD Peña Jimenez, along with Hamilton Sobrero Zana, great climbers to support. Um, if if we can get a top ten out of this, that would be incredible. But uh, we're we're not winning this race. I'll try our best, but we're not we're not winning this race. We're into this big final climb, and we're struggling a little bit, but we're not getting toasted going 85 yet. Um, it looks like we're about to though, as people pick up the pace. Like literally, as I as I start talking, it starts happening. Um, I don't even think. We're going to be able to use these guys at all. Aular has a little bit of red left. We could go, you know, 85 forever, but these guys are accelerating and getting into the red. Just gel up everybody. Uh, Osorio is way behind and having to burn way more red than I would like to see to get into position. I should have gotten into a better position earlier, but what are you going to do? Almeida's used himself up early. I mean, Pagacar is going and he's, we're not going to catch Pagacar, but we can, you know, if we can beat one or two of these other really good riders. That would be lovely. Yates keeping pace with us, no problem. I mean, we're dropping everyone but the stars. And gotcha might be kind of out of gas a little bit, maybe? Question mark? I mean, he wouldn't be on a fitness peak or anything right now. He's going to save some juice at the end, though. Ooh, 1.5. This little yellow bar. I'm scared. Slow it down to 85. Hopefully Ardia can have some, some juice for the end. I think it's going to be a third here because, yeah, he's... We had a really fast pace get pushed here and we had to go harder than I'd like to stay with it. However, certainly nothing embarrassing about finishing third to Tade Pagacar and Simon Yates. That's a dub in my book. We beat Jai Hindley, Sergio Aguita, Juan Ayuso, Jao Almeida. <laughs> like, look at the list of guys there who came in uh, 5 through 20. We beat a lot of riders who have better attributes than Ardia, so... 
good podium, man. I mean, I'm sick of saying that. I'm sick of saying good podium. I would like to start winning some races, but in this case, it's not cope. It's actually a good podium. Getting into the hilly section of this final stage of the Tour of Germany, and man, this would be a pretty big accomplishment if we could finish in the, the final selection of this stage and get a top three for Ardea. Again, you know, sick of saying good podium instead of winning races, but in a dot pro stage race, finishing on the podium ahead of Jai Hindley, pretty insane. Uh, gonna continue to follow this second to last time over, but we're gonna have to group up here and, uh, and start pushing right after this downhill, I think. Osorio is going to go first. Ben Gonzalez. And uh, that doesn't even though Reinhold Cost is fitter, like is he better on hills? Yeah, it's about the same today with the with the boosts. And then Aular Cepeda Ardia, I think. Aular 76, but Medium Mountain 71. Uh, yeah, we'll do it this way up all the domestiques right now start going 85 not much of a selection here yet and the breakaway is not too far away all going to come down to this last hill unless we get blocked up by all these technical corners and can't get anywhere <laughs> that certainly won't be fun if that's why we get dropped disconnected as we come up to the hill yeah it's it's go time Ardia got caught up behind and had to use up too much red but he will recover it all before this downhill so or on this downhill rather so no big keep pushing pushing over this plateau only 5.1 to go. Don't want to make the same mistake I made on that Guatemala race and like not use up the resources. Get around this curve and then go to Alar. Cepeda gel, we got 3.4. Uh, I basically just want to immediately gel up our idea then. Got some separation. I don't think we can move up. I think that Yates is too far in front. I mean, we can start sprinting now. It's all downhill. Uh, I'm going to have to have the others. If I mean, this is like bad strategy for the team winning the race, but behind us here Hinley uh yeah this is bad strategy for the team winning the race but it's giving Ardia the best chance so get out of this Ardia's way can we swing and block Hinley we can I'm a horrible person but Ardia wins the stage and clinches third place in the GC I assume that Gates is not going to be so far behind that we move up but I guess it's not impossible this is him right here right 25 seconds down yeah we're not going to move up, but a stage win in third in the GC is pretty incredible. We've been blowing it in all of these rinky dink dot two races against absolute scrubs, but we come into a dot pro race against Jai Hinley, Simon Yates, and Tade Pagacher, and we smoke everybody. Please make it make sense. Camille Ardia does finish third in the GC, uh, 17 seconds behind Yates, and 43 behind Pagacher fantastic result for us. Here's an enormous dub for us that we didn't even have to do anything for. Jonathan Narvaez won a stage of La Vuelta, which increases the popularity of cycling in Ecuador by three points, up from three to six, just for winning a stage of La Vuelta. Crazy. Only one stage of the Tour of Romania where we have a chance to be competitive, and uh, it's this one. The second stage basically there's just one hill uh, we've got people attacking but they're not really getting away I'm 
I'm gonna see how long we can get away with having our weakest rider go 85 although we do want to drop people I'm going to go back on what I said immediately after I said it I'm very smart and very organized as we get to the the steepest part of this people are attacking is 91 from Frere gonna do the trick maybe maybe not maybe we should swap them with Fagundas because Fagundas has way less red Still 13 Ks to go here, even though this is the, the most difficult part. Uh, we've got another uphill before we get to the actual uh, KOM point. I think we'll probably go 99 up that thing. And then a big scent to the finish. So uh, no sprint here. We've just got to be in first place when that downhill starts, basically. Is this a... Uh started kind of we need our deer to be attached though now he is now we go got to get Fagundas out of the way oh Sorio has basically no red left that's cool didn't notice that was a thing I'm sure some of you did and we're yelling it at the screen him out front first and then have Cepeda do the uh, last little bit to the KOM. Okay, a bit disorganized and dysfunctional there, but this is looking like it's going to be pretty much uncontested, so that's cool. We're away. They'll kind of catch up, but Ardia will still be in the front once the downhill gets going, and that's that's kind of all that matters, really. Yeah, this will be as uh, a bunch of our dudes fall, I guess. At least they're not injured them all on default, put Cepeda on default, Ardia comfortably flying away to the victory here. Um, I expected to win, but I didn't expect it to be uncontested. I was kind of like disorganized and not really paying attention there, made some mistakes, and yet um, Ardia is going to win this very, very easily. Uh, hey, maybe we're on a bit of a roll here after doing a bunch of throwing the last couple episodes. This one is going very very well um i think that's probably going to lead to ardia getting a gc win too because all of the other stages uh, are completely pancake flat the time bonuses that decline and halverson were able to pick pick up in the sprint stages did make things a little bit scary but they kind of battled each other and were able to split them um so we ended up getting the win in the gc of the tour of romania Lucky that, you know, if one of those guys was dominant and took all of the bonuses, we wouldn't have had enough of a time gap from the one hilly stage to hold on. But since they took a bunch of uh, points and stages off each other, we are able to get the, the GC. So Ardia, very much on a roll. I'm going to do a little swing for the fences with the trainer here. I was going to upgrade our staff for next year, whether or not we got promoted, because we are in a good financial position. We have plenty of money in the bank. We're going to have more money when the year turns over. But I wasn't going to go, you know, up that high just because, you know, our budget is still limited. So I was going to take our staff up from regional to national level if there were guys available. There are no national level groundbreaking trainers available who are from Latin America. There is, however, as you can see on the screen, an international level Venezuelan trainer. His wage is quite a bit higher than our current trainers or than the national trainers. However, I'm going to take the plunge. Hopefully this will pay off in just development of our riders in the future, but I think it's also um, a good way to try to get Ardia that upgrade before the end of the year. So we are going to spend the money, bring in, uh, I don't know which one of those names is actually the first name and which, like what order you pronounce, you say these names in given the backwards nature of uh, PCM's naming system, but this Venezuelan trainer uh, is going to start training 
Mio Ardia, and hopefully that will uh, that will make the difference. Quick team index update. I think we've clinched promotion, even though we're you know kind of doing this thing with Ardia to try to make sure. It doesn't look like there's any chance for uh, enough teams to pass us that we wouldn't get into Continental Pro. There's eight slots below us right now, and if we go to the transfer dossiers, there's only one four and a half star rider left, Archie Ryan, who I presume will sign for a world tour team, but one of those teams could sign him and then you know, one of the teams below us could sign him, and then he would improve them above us. Everyone else here is four star. There's a couple four stars who could improve to four and a half before the transfer window window closes here. Cool set, Johannesson, Vandermeulen, Busato. But for the most part, it's just four stars. Um, it's a lot of four stars that are going to be better than the ones that we signed, but not by a big margin. There just is not enough talent left in the market for eight teams to pass us, even if all eight of those teams immediately below us were to sign at least one of these riders, um, we're not going to we're not going to move down that many spots. So I think we've got it in the bag. Stage two of the tour of Slovakia here. Uh, pretty sure I misspoke earlier into the tour of Slovenia. Uh, the tour of Slovenia is in uh, June, just before the tour Tour de France. This is very much the tour of Slovakia. Second stage here has quite a few climbs. They are not particularly difficult though, and you're going to be getting over the second to last one in pretty good condition, especially given that we can uh, recover quite a bit on this descent. The start list here isn't necessarily as strong as Ger uh, Tour of Germany on the like top end. It is, however, deeper. There are, I would say, a higher volume of good riders at this race than there were at the, uh, at the Tour of Germany, as we see uh, a decent rider from Burgos escaping, but not someone I'm worried about. You can see we have like Piccolo is a very good rider. Padun EF has a has a strong squad here with Paulus probably as their strongest rider, and you know there are several good teams at this race. So once again, might not be possible for us to win, but hopefully we can outsmart other teams and get on the podium. Uh, outsmarting them would start by like getting organized before the climb, not when the climb starts. So we're already off to a pretty bad start in that respect. That's cool. But we're going to train up and have uh, Isak Del Toro, zombie Isak Del Toro, nowhere near the potential of the real one. I'm going to mention that every single time we race with him, it's going to make me very sad every time. But we are very much... At the front here, breakaway caught, setting a decent tempo without uh, putting any hurt into Ardia with 8.8k to go. Onto Melvio. And then what is this looking like? Okay, so we have uh, a very gradual slope after. It's weird where the. Why isn't the KOM at the top of the big slope I don't get it anyway it looks like there's a much flatter section for the once we hit like 4k to go and then a little like 300 meter kicker at the end so let's see if I can judge this properly Decent little shift there from Melvio are kind of dipping into Ardia's red a bit more than these guys because again he would not be our leader today if we weren't like only riding for him give him his fisher back Ayuso Jeez, one Ayuso's here he was at the Tour of Germany too but as a uh, as a domestique for Pogacar he's the main man today get to uh, one k to the KOM, but there's like another kilometer of climbing after the KOM. It's going to be a little bit careful here. I think we'll start going 99 here once we see the KOM. I 
don't want to burn out our Dia. I'm watching it, we're close to burning him out. I'm kind of having to baby him up the climb since he is not actually our strongest rider. Hopefully we can drop some other people on the way here. Are we in the yeah, we're in this like platter part? Okay, he's not gonna win because he's not gonna have any red for the kicker. You know, we do what we can. Kind of hoping for a yellow sprint for Cepeda that comes kind of late. UAE has their entire team left. Yeah, UAE and Paulus just smoke everybody, but we beat everybody who isn't UAE and Paulus. Ardia actually finishes third among our riders, not because of an error by me, but because he wasn't actually, uh, you know, fit enough or talented enough to get around the other guys. We kind of just dragged him to the top with two better conditioned riders. Uh, put some time into potential other GC guys though. Hopefully we can still win a stage, but uh, we stayed in the main GC selection, so that's good. Looking at the profile for the other Kili in air quotes stage of the Tour of Slovakia, the last 30 Ks of it are pancake flat, so we have no we have no opportunity to be competitive here. Uh, so I'm just gonna quick sim it and we'll get on to the other races. La Vuelta keeps on giving. Juan Sebastian Milano wins a stage, growing the popularity of cycling in Colombia by two points. It is now also six, along with Ecuador. So you're probably looking at this going, what happened? Uh, how did Ardia only get 14th? Why didn't I see any of this race? Uh, basically what happened is I wasn't paying attention and a breakaway got 15 minutes up the road. So at that point, I just stuck everyone on default and said, uh, you know, there's nothing I can do. I already screwed up. I'm not going to, you know, cheat and restart the race or anything like that. And I'm not going to be able to chase on a 15 minute breakaway. So, uh, and I'm also just not going to show you that because there's nothing interesting to see. So stuck everybody on default. That's what happened. Uh, I will try to not let that happen again. And as we go into the tour of Turkey, I will play better. Before we do the tour of Turkey, Ardia has had a level up and it has helped us a little bit. Uh, he's still four stars, but you may notice his stamina is now quite a bit better. He's been training stage races, which works on his stamina, and uh, it's up to 69. Very nice. I believe that his recovery time trial and prologue also went up a little bit. Uh, his climbing has not, but that's fine. His climbing is already pretty good. If we go over to the teams page in uh, transfers, we will see that that has helped us uh, a little bit, not not a ton, but uh, a little bit. Ardia is now the second best rider we have signed up for next year uh, ahead of Taisedo, and I think that moved us up one index spot from where we, we were. Um, I think we went down, we'd gone down all the way to 32nd with other team signings, and that Ardia's level up there has moved us back up to 31st. So if we go to the dossiers page here, only two riders left that can, you know, hurt us by teams below us signing them. If teams below us sign Coolset or uh, Lowland, they should be able to move up, but there should only be two more opportunities for teams to move up. So that should uh, lock us in to Continental Pro, the second division. For the Tour of Turkey, and there are three stages where we have the ability to be competitive. This is the first of them. Uh, I believe it's the fourth or either the fourth or fifth stage, fifth stage of the race overall. I'm going to slow this down to one speed here as we get into the climb, um, or just pause. As I show you the riders, um, good good riders here. Jumbo, sending Van Aert, Stevie Kreiswijk, Sepp Kuss, Attila Walter. We've got Hanley, Hurt, Eiking, Bergado. Good riders here. Um, I think we're probably not going to be able to beat whoever Jumbo's leader is, whether it's Van Aert or Kuss. Um, I feel like we can beat the other ones, though. Even though it's, you know, 
we don't have the best the best riders here we do have uh our dia on a plus three on a fitness peak i'm thinking basically all the other good riders will have already used up their last fitness peak uh of the season that they have available i would be very surprised if um any of these guys was on better than like 85 percent fitness so we should be fine theoretically uh let's find out <clears throat> Starting reasonably here with uh, Ruiz leading up, but he's a he is a sprinter. He's not a big climber. Even going, you know, we couldn't go 85 effort this whole way with people who are good climbers. That would wear out Cepeda. But these first few guys going 85 are not going to do anything to him. Uh, we really do have to push the the tempo tough if we want to get rid of uh, Oot Van Air. He's not really known as a as a climber, but his medium mountain is 76, mountain 72. Um, He's won some some hip, uh, mountaintop finishes in his career, uh, even though he's more of a classics rider, sprinter, leadout guy. Uh, he's an insane all-around rider, so we can't just sit back. We've got to make the the tempo hard to have a chance. A couple guys attacking Catneo and Carr. Carr's pretty good, but I feel like if we continue to go. 85. In fact, we can step it up here. We've only got... Yeah, so Kus and Kreisvike are starting to, to push. Business picking up here. Um, why do we have Cepeda behind Ardia? That was, uh, not intentional. Some of you might have noticed that. Gonna slow it down a little bit while we let them get uh, moved around. On to Vidare, and we're we're looking good. We should have plenty of uh, gas in the tank to go really hard at the very end. Van Air not even close to being dropped yet though. Didn't expect he would be. What have we got left here? Okay, we've hit a pretty steep part and it's just gonna be pretty steep to the end. Uh Christ Wyke is still here with Van Aert. Koos must just not be on good fitness if he's not anywhere near. Uh gonna go yellow 99 here for a minute. Case to go. Let's go to Fagundes. Uh, Van Aert is dropping. He's hanging on, but dropping. Uh, we're going to go to 99, see if we can't get some time gap, because we're going to need it, because he's been winning these sprint stages and getting these sprint bonus points. Beta and then finally Ardia. Going to win the stage, but is it going to be by enough time that we have a chance to beat Van Aert for the GC? We'll find out here. Nope, he came on strong there at the end. He only lost about 15 seconds. So we're going to have to hope he screws up in one of the other stages, but they are not as difficult as this one. So think that probably means we don't have a chance at the GC. However, very good stage win for Ardia. I am satisfied with that, even if uh, GC is not going to happen. What you are looking at is the most Woot Van Air stage to ever exist. A Category 2 climb that is just hard enough to take out other sprinters, but not hard enough to take him out, followed by 6 kilometers of downhill and 4 kilometers of pancake flat. Uh, I don't know how we're going to drop him on this climb, or... How we're going to compete with him in the sprint we're going to try but this certainly looks like a stage that is tailor-made for Woot Van Aert and then when he wins he will
reflect a nice little time bonus that will probably make him impossible to overcome at the end. I am going to give this my best shot, uh, but I am extremely pessimistic about the possibility of uh, beating Van Eer on this stage. I think the only thing we can do is just like literally push 99 constantly the entire way up the hill and pray that he gets caught out. Uh, I'm not sure what other what other tactic you would do to attempt to drop Wood Van Eer on a climb like this. So here we go. Starting with Ranhel Costa. I think we can go 99 to the end. We'll find out. At some point we will have to ease up a little bit just because we can't have RDA be the the last one. I don't think it's wise to have him go solo to the end. He'll need a teammate. Uh, we're actually going to burn out Vidare before Cicada here. Unfortunate. On to Osorio. Where is Woot? Not even breaking a sweat. We do have a we do have a gap though. Can we stay away? 21 seconds is the gap. I assume that split is going to cause other jumbo riders to chase. Now we've got a couple other riders who are not Woot. Uh, it doesn't look like Woot's got any teammates to help, but those other riders are coming back at us rather quickly. Sorio not the best descender. Fagundes, not much better. Uh, I don't know why I just accidentally detached Ardia from the train there. Stick Osorio on the soft attack on this downhill section. Let's see if we can stay away. who Ardia is apparently struggling to follow. Wasting red, very cool. Hey, we're staying away though. I think Boot's gonna get us here at the very end. Yellow sprint. Until we get to 1k. Here goes our, yeah, there he is. <laughs> well, what are you gonna do about that? Uh, I don't think we could have played that any differently. I'm not sure there's anything we could have done about that. Just, uh, a perfectly designed stage for Woot Van Aert. And upon seeing the parkour for the last hilly stage, uh, I am rage quitting. <laughs> I am going to quick sim and be very happy with my stage win, my second place in the GC, and my first place in the Young Riders competition, uh, assuming Ardia does not get injured on the quick sims. So congratulations to Woot Van Aert. At the end of today's episode, a successful first season for us with Manzana post a bone uh, getting a lot of points, more points than any other team in uh, Continental and moving up to the second division. Uh, as we end this episode, I'll give you a sneak peek at next year's team. We simmed ahead to January 1st, so we have our uh, our roster for next year. The eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that we've already had uh, a downgrade here. Jonathan Caicedo, who uh, was one of the riders who got us promoted. He was four stars, best rider when we signed him. He's already had a uh, downgrade. Thankfully, uh, the calculations for promotion and relegation were done before he had that downgrade, so we got promoted to Continental Pro, and then that happened. Uh, also, fortunately, we only signed him to a one-year contract, so he's probably still worth the money he's on right now. He won't be once he had another downgrade, but that's fine. He won't be counting against our budget for next season. Um, but we'll get more into the future of this team bunch of preseason stuff to look at in the next episode. But for now, thank you very much for watching and uh, see you next time.